Hi guys, it's me again. I'm on the allotment for a rainy vlog this week. Yeah, what a difference a few days make, right? Heat wave, lovely. Um, and now just torrential rain. I mean, it would be nice with like, not to have to be in this hot, dry, and then really wet, cold cycle, like constantly. It would be nice with like some sort of medium. <laughs> Because I'm sure the plants have like no idea what's going on. Though maybe they do, maybe they're used to it, I don't know. My water butts and all my water collections from May, from the rainy, rainy May we had, had just about run dry. So the rain has come in a timely way for that. So I've spent the afternoon now just like shuffling water about. Sorry if it's a bit echoey, I'm in the greenhouse obviously. Um, been shuffling water from one butt that was overflowing to the big ones at the back of the greenhouse, you know, trying to get it all, um, collect as much as possible basically, not waste any of it. Because I'm sure it'll be drier again very shortly. So I thought we talk a little bit about watering today and a little bit about what seeds to sow now or that I'm sowing now and why. And then also how how I've dealt with gardening overwhelm this week. Yes, I know I talk about this every week, but it's on my mind quite a lot because um, I feel quite behind this year constantly. So yeah, um, <laughs> right, let's start with watering. So for my chat on watering, I thought we'd go outside just to, so I can show you, it'd be a bit easier. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit windy. So I hope you can hear me all right <laughs> and uh, I'll just switch you around now. So these are my two big water butts um, that I collect most of the rainwater. I also have, so this one's attached to this side of the greenhouse. I have another water butt there, smaller one, and then I have two either side of this one and then I have random containers like, sorry it's a car coming past right there. Um, you know, water collects in the uh, wheelbarrow, for example, and I transfer all those bits and bobs into here. And I got another big one here, just so I can, you know, maintain as much watering as I possibly can. But it's a finite resource for me, so I have to be very careful with my watering. So priorities for my watering are seedlings in pots, things in the greenhouses, obviously, because. Uh, they don't have other access to it. <laughs> Sorry, it's very rainy. And uh, things that I think need it more than others. So recently planted out seedlings, for example. What a lovely day. But you can actually get away with not watering quite a lot of stuff, right? And I found this out because I have not been able to water <laughs> as much as people say you should, for example. So these are my peas, tall peas super tall they have were planted out early in spring and they were under fleas and they were watered in when I planted them out and then they had the cold weather in April and then they had the wet weather in May and then the hot weather now in June and I haven't watered them and they grew like that and people say peas right they want to be watered every three days um, and you know you can still grow peas like there's peas there and there's marsh too there you know so and it is quite a lush plot here. Corn, I haven't watered, uh, and lots and lots of bindweed. But there are obviously things that would benefit from more water. For example, my potatoes. So I harvested my first earlies. Some of them, some of the plants, because they were basically dying. And they are the ones that are on the edge of the potato bed. And um, yeah, they were just gone all yellow, I'll show you. So they were um, the four plants here, and they were worse than these two. So that's these are the three that I have left of the swift first earlies. And basically the ground was like concrete, and it's mainly the problem is the grass here, right? It's stealing all the moisture that was in there, and there was no way they're gonna survive without me watering, right? I could have watered, and they might have done better. It's the same thing with this row of potatoes, right? But I still got some harvest from it and I knew this was going to be the problem. I'm not sure I got all the potatoes out because it was so hard. I'm going to have to dig around now to see if I can get more. And it was basically enough for 
two meals, which isn't really what you're after uh, per potato plant. But you know, you just have to accept that some things work and some things don't. And it's just not my priority to water my potatoes. So that's one of the reasons why I'm trying growing them in containers this year. See if that works any better. Uh, they're looking lush, uh, but I haven't looked, right? And then of course, it's the reason why I'm mulching my paths so that I can maintain all the moisture in my beds rather than feeding the paths, right? I'll show you what the potatoes in the uh, containers look like. So these are the potatoes in the containers. I've watered them once during the heat wave because I thought I saw some wilting at the top here. Uh, and then we had the rain obviously. So they're they're looking lush. I have had a dig around in the first earlies, but I couldn't find any potatoes. If you're wondering when to harvest, that's a good way of doing it. So you can move some of the soil away or the compost and see if you can find any potatoes. And if they're the size, kind of size that you want of for first earlies, you can harvest them. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought that these are ready because they have no kind of signs of going yellow. So with first earlies, when they start changing color to yellow, I would say you should harvest, don't wait any longer. Uh, as you saw on my other ones up there, that some of them were super yellow. That's a little bit too late for harvest. So uh, you might have seen right behind the potatoes there, um, I got the asparagus bed, right? And it is middle of June and I would say you stop picking right about now. You want to give the plants a rest for next year to store some energy to produce all those nice shoots for next next year's harvest. I was disappointed this year. You know, they some of the some of the crowns were good producers. Some just did not do well. And yeah, I think that's one um, one of my crops that have definitely suffered from not watering. So I basically never watered. <laughs> I've never watered my asparagus. Uh, like apart from the first year when I planted them I have not watered them so that's another one you know where I probably should maybe have invested some more watering but it didn't happen and here we are so we'll see how they do this year now they're getting rain hopefully they can recover enough and produce some nice shoots next year otherwise I'll have to I don't know rethink and get rid of the crowns that are not working um, yeah, I mean, I'm a fairly new asparagus grower, so they might be fine in a few years time. I just maybe not pick. If they're thin, if the spears are thin, I don't tend to pick them. Um, you know, from that crown, if they're really thin and weedy coming out of there, I, I don't pick my crown and I, I have a lot of crowns. But um, yeah, yeah, I'm not, just not super happy with my asparagus this year. Obviously, some of them are, you know, proper thick. Um, but yeah, there's a few that are not, I'm not super happy with. But yeah, look at the peas. It's just amazing. Isn't it amazing? It's just amazing. So I'm just walking over to my blueberries. So I pointed out in last vlog, I think that I've got lots of berries on them and um, that was all fine and dandy. And then, so they like a lot of water. So there's another, another crop that I, I have and unintentionally sacrificed with my no watering thing so yeah i'll show you what they look like now so i actually managed to cut the grass <laughs> so i can actually find them so this plant is doing well and is producing the fruit this one had lots and lots of flowers on it but they started the, f the fruit either they have not been pollinated in the heat right so that that's one option and they're these dark blue ones are drying up but I think it's more likely that they've, the plant has suffered with um, too little water. So I've actually cut off some dry tips because they were dead. And it's even more obvious on this one. You can see, right? It looks like it's dying back. And I think this is lack of water. So I'll see how it reacts. So this one I'm a little bit worried about though. There is fresh growth. I think uh, I, sh I think it should be okay, but it's a little bit disappointing, and I wish I'd I wish I'd watered these more. Um, but I know for next year now that these don't do well in a dry heat wave, and I need to keep on top of the watering, even though they're in the ground, right? I mean, it's a different story for potted trees. 
and I know that that they will need watering and they actually did quite poorly being in the ground here um, because I haven't mulched a proper bed for them you know they were planted here or oh, sorry they were planted here with the greenhouses so I had to dig them up and they've done much better in pots because I've actually been on it and watered them and uh, yeah but look at this leaning one seriously uh, I think I'm gonna have to stake it it's always been leaning because um, it's like the way it's been grafted but uh, yeah it's just not it's just so heavy top heavy um, yeah I'm gonna have to support it <laughs> yeah that's not great but yeah so in general there's good and bad with with watering I mean you, you still lose crops even though you water diligently and maybe some you lose because you water too much right and it is surprising how much you can get away with not watering things uh, you know I got loads of raw beans I got loads of broccoli I got loads of peas and strawberries are doing great you know and the garlic is fine like, so you can you can get away with a loss of the not watering but then there are a few bits um, and the lettuces I haven't watered the lettuces and they're doing great I mean they're absolutely massive now here they are and actually None of them have bolted yet, I mean, though they are they are getting there, aren't they? Uh, the spinach is bolting. And this is the perpetual spinach, so it's always first to bolt. The bees love it, though. But, you know, the, this spinach is not bolting yet. And uh, these lettuces are just... I mean, they're just immense, aren't they? Look really lovely in the rain. This um, tree spinach... Uh, I'm sort of regretting planting here. Apparently they can get absolutely massive um, and I need to start eating from them. But, you know, I already have so much spinach uh, because I always fail with spinach, so I planted quite a lot of spinach. So, yes, here we are. But speaking of lettuces, we are currently drowning in lettuce, right? Or I am anyway, and I, I you probably are too. And that, my friends, is a sign you need to sow more. <laughs> It doesn't maybe feel like it, but you should definitely sow some more lettuce now because these will bolt really quickly uh, especially if you have some warmer tempers, temperatures again after all this rain and then you want to have lettuces for uh, later in the summer so sowing them now means that you'll be provided with lettuce leaves they will bolt really quickly because it's um, summer and the light levels are high and it's probably going to be warm, right? And then you need to sow again in August uh, and September <laughs> for autumn lettuce and for winter lettuce. So there's there's some, some urgent sowing needed now and uh, yeah, let's go inside the greenhouse and talk a bit more about that because it's starting to rain again. So if what I'm talking about resonates with you or you like what I do, it would be great if you can give this video a thumbs up because um, yeah, why not do something nice? Oh, let's see. Um, the birds are out. Oh, let's go see. Oh! <laughs> right, it's wet. Must remember, I'm wearing wellies. Wellies. Um, so it's very slippy. I have like my plots on a slope, so when it rains, it gets it gets quite dangerous. Oh, okay. And we're back inside. Right. So I did some sewing last night. And uh, yeah, let's have a look. So I've got a massive tray of um, the brassica family. So I've got more kohlrabi. I've got more cauliflower. I've got all my kales. One, two, three, four, five, six kales. And then I've got Aztec broccoli, which is uh, a new one to me. And then broccoli... Uh, asparagus kale which is something that you eat the flowering shoots of a bit like um, uh, sprouting broccoli and I have purple sprouting broccoli as well here and uh, regular broccoli so these brassicas are all for either for harvesting in autumn like the kohlrabi uh, I've got swede in there as well and uh, uh, the calabres and things like that will be ready in autumn the purple sprouting broccoli and the asparagus kale and maybe the 
the Aztec broccoli will also be ready in sp next spring. So, I've spoken a bit about this before, but I saw purple sprouting broccoli now rather than in spring that the seed packet suggests. Because if I sow in spring, I have to keep the plant happy and healthy and taking up space in my allotment until maybe I harvest them in March. So I can sow in, in February, March and harvest in March. Or I can sow now in June and leave quite a few months free in the beds and harvest next April. So it's only a month delay on the harvest, but you get like four months extra free space in the bed. So for me that works well. And April is actually the time where you have, for me anyway, where I have less other veg ready um, in in the allotment. So for me, that's where the hunger gap gets really bad. So it's really nice to have that. Um, the sprouts will have finished and it's time for another brassica and magically the purple spreading broccoli appears. It's amazing. <laughs> Uh, then I've also sown again all my herbs, so parsley, dill, coriander, and it's just a matter of just keeping up with the sowing. Maybe you don't need to sow so much parsley, um, but always coriander and dill if you use them. Coriander specifically, especially now in summer because it just bolts immediately as soon as the sun comes back out. So yeah, I'm, I'm re sown that. And then... I sowed my beans, right, for planting out now-ish, and um, yeah, so be beans, like many other seeds, don't like to be soaking wet, you know, and um, and we've had a heat wave, right, <laughs> so I thought, oh yeah, it'll be fine, they can be outside, it'd be great, they'll love germinating uh, up on a shelf away from the slugs, rather than in the beds and they won't get too wet. They might get a bit hot um, or a bit dry, right? <laughs> but stupidly, I actually had a look and a high percentage, more over 50% of the seeds have rotted. Uh, There's only one of this climbing berlotti of the six I've sown have survived and sprouted. And these were seeds that were given to me and I don't have any more. <laughs> So I have one plant, but I, I guess I can grow it and save my own seed. And the other one is a dwarf bolotti, which is fine too, but it's just um, less efficient use of space for me. I'm growing it anyway, so... But yeah, so the reason why they got too wet is because they were on a shelf um, outside the greenhouse here where the tomatoes were. So the tomatoes were sitting above them. And I was obviously watering those pots and that was dripping down onto these and they were just getting wet, way too wet, way, way, way too wet. So, so stupid. So I've had to re-sow all my beans, apart from the climbing bolotti that I just don't have. Um, and I've gone for a CD60 for these and I've gone for... 12 of each, like way more than I sold originally because I'm like, now it's getting late. Uh, I feel really stressed about it and I'm like, I'm just gonna go with the ones that come up first and plant them out immediately um, so they can get going. Basically, that's what, I, that's what I thought. So it's like, it's the most efficient use of space to use a CD60. Oh, it's the yeah, Charles Dowding one. Um, very small. It worked well doing it with sunflowers, so you just have to pop them out and plant them on in a pot or plant them out when they come up rather than leaving them. Um, so yeah, I've gone for loads. <laughs> so I'm growing quite a few beans. Um, so we've got Cherokee Trail of Tears, Princess, Necker Gold, uh, Cupidon, Violet, and uh, Sar Runner Beans, and Gaia edamame bean and then borlotti beans and uh, purple teepee and uh, cobra I think it is yeah that's that's a lot of beans right it's a lot of beans but I have some good news I spoke to the proprietor of our village shop and uh, we came up with a plan of having a basket there she already sells some veg 
Um, but she says that tomatoes go like crazy and beans isn't something that she buys in, but she would like to. So things like that. Excess I'm gonna put in a basket in our village shop with um, uh, like a price, like I'll have to come up with some sort of token price, but like um, maybe with like paper bags or something. Maybe you guys have an idea. Just fill your own paper bag and then pay, I don't know, two pounds or something and it's gonna go to charity, probably CRUK because that's who I work for. Sorry, that's who is funding my work, so I might as well give some to charity. And uh, yeah, I think that's a great idea. So then I feel less guilty. If it's guilt, I don't know if it's guilt. I feel less apprehensive about growing so many tomatoes, for example, or so many beans or so many squash, right? Because I know now I can I can shift it if I need to. I, I don't have to laden all the stuff on only my neighbors, but the whole village. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, could I have done it for profit? I'm sure, so it's a little bit iffy with uh, allotments and making money off what you produce. So I think um, technically, or is it even a law, you're not supposed to, it's not supposed to give you an income per se, you know, it's that's not what is in the lease for your, the land. You know, you're supposed to grow vegetables or, you know, fr fruit and flowers or whatever for your own enjoyment. I think you are allowed to sell excess though, but obviously, like with a lot of British laws, this feels like a loophole, you know, it's like, if you grow only tomatoes on your plot, then yeah, you're gonna have excess, aren't you? So, are you then allowed to sell that and make money of it? I don't know. It's not that I need that anyway, per se, uh, and I, f I feel a little bit like it comes with, I don't know, does it come with f further responsibilities if you sell things for profit like you need you know quality control and uh, making sure it's safe and all that. I mean obviously it's safe to eat and everything's organic as in I don't use any pesticides and stuff but you never know you know you never know you never know maybe even selling for charity is a bit iffy you let me know guys do you do this do you do you get rid of your excess somehow Sorry, that was a bit of a rant. Let's uh, get back to it. <laughs> so I'm in the small greenhouse and we talked quite a lot about that in the last vlog, but I'm happy to report some growth has happened. You might notice more than me because obviously I'm here every day, but I think the melons are growing, which is, which is exciting. So we have one melon there, that's collective farm woman. And then we have the tiny, watermelon here blacktail mountain early watermelon so that one's definitely grown i mean it's got tiny leaves still and then i have one here that's grown maybe like an inch and then one in the corner and then this one has definitely grown and so has um that one and those are the ones so you know it's exciting um the chilies and the aubergines you know they're doing all right this one's flowering and um, I hope that this one, I sort of tried to make sure it was pollinated, is growing. I mean, the, it's still sitting on here, but it's not um, come out yet. So I don't know if it's been pollinated or not. It, it most likely has been because it was so warm, so the, the conditions were right. This one over here, because now it's gone cold, um, I'm not sure. Because they are obviously heat-loving plants, so we'll see. we'll see how it goes. And the same with the chilies. So some of them that were flowering uh, during the heat wave, they will probably be pollinated. Do you see that pollen just fly out there? Um, so they are self-pollinated, right? So you can flick them like this to make sure, especially on a day like today where it's gray um, and the door is closed. There's not going to be any pollinators in here. So it's a good idea to to go over the flowers and just flick them to make sure that they're pollinated. Um, but yeah, so the ones that are flowering now might not set fruit, so we'll see. But there should be some coming, like these ones that were flowering last week uh, or a few days ago. They hopefully should have a little chili coming. So this is the Padron pepper. Um, but yeah, so the Lufa. So I understand it. You need a male and a female. And I've only had female flowers yet. So I guess I'm not going to get any. <laughs> 
Um, they're still tiny, so there's still time. They're not dead yet. I'm so happy. Right, let's have a quick look in the other greenhouse and then um, talk a little bit about gardening overwhelm. Yay, my favorite topic. If I can get out of here. <laughs> there we go. Right, well, it's, um, the rain's, rain's holding off. Oh, there's my plot neighbor, Tom, old Tom. Yeah, so gardening overwhelm, right? So, you know, I still have, um, I hope you can see that. Uh, I still have a lot of seedlings left to be planted out. And I've just decided that, I've just decided to accept that I can't grow everything Sorry, I can't prioritize everything that I grow because I grow so much and so many different types of vegetables that I just don't have the time to so, to grow them all correctly or perfectly or opt optimally. Um, so I'll just have to accept that and I'll just be happy if I can get them out and growing, right? And you know, the things I do prioritize grow really well and that just shows if I had the time It'd be great and you know not to worry so much about it so in this greenhouse you know the tomatoes are doing really well let's have a little look yep so lots of tomatoes lots of chilies and i've got the basil in and i've got my marigolds in finally and the tomatoes are you know they are growing and are they growing as quickly or are they as far advanced as other people's, you know, that I follow on Instagram or uh, that you see on TV or whatever? No, uh, they could be much further advanced, but I'm just happy I've got them in as opposed to the ones that are still sitting outside in their pots, you know, so I should just be happy with that. And they're doing really well and there's going to be plenty of tomatoes if I don't plant all the ones I wanted to plant, then that's fine. The chilies, um, yes, I could have grown them much more efficiently, much better, and they could have been huge by now if I had watered them, if I treated them for fungus gnats properly, you know, if I'd planted them out um, in, a, in a timely manner, like everything else. Yes, they could have been great, and I could have had massive plants by now. But I'll just have to accept that this is, this is the way I grow and just be happy with that. Um, the melons in here are not doing anything. They are not dying yet, so I guess that's good. This loofah has lost a few leaves, but it seems to be climbing. And these three, yes, I have <laughs> three loofahs in here as well, so that's five in total. And the cucumbers are, you know, they're doing fine. They're doing fine. Everything's doing fine. So, you know, the ones I, stuff I haven't planted out, like all my winter squash, all my courgettes, all the flowers I wanted to grow, all the dahlias, all the seeds I wanted to sow, the flower seeds. If it gets done, that's a bonus. Um, and everything I have got done is great. And I actually got some outdoor to tomatoes planted out, including the ones I'm super excited about, which is um, the Tombola. So they're from a company, I think they're called Revel Seeds or no, Tomato, Tomato Revolution it's called, sorry. Um, my friend got some, either bought some or got some scent. Either way, it's just a fun concept. So they've just basically made a, a mix of all their tomato seeds, I guess one of each, and you can um, get them in a bag and you don't know what variety you got. So she sent them out, share them out across a few of us and I grew six seeds and five uh, germinated. Three I've planted out, they're definitely tall varieties. The other two, I'm not sure, they had like the seed capsule was like sort of stuck on them. So either they're delayed and small because of that or they're small because they're dwarfs. That's really tricky to know, like when you don't know <laughs> what kind of tomato variety you've got, it's really tricky actually. So, um, but I'm enjoying it so far. So at least the three tall ones have been planted out and I still got to do um, the other 
the other two small ones and so we'll see but yeah seeing as it's not raining i'll uh, i'll treat you to a look at my outdoor growing structure for the tomatoes so this is it here you can see these um cast iron i guess they are rebar mesh sort of bent i inherited them on the plot oh it's still quite windy so here are my tomatoes so i use the same sort of system as inside and these are the three tombolas, one with the potato leaves and two regular ones. So they'll just go up the strings. We'll see how well it lasts. So the thing about ute string that I've used, it tends to deteriorate in the weather, right? So in the ground, I've actually got a plastic string that I've tied to it, but I want to use as little as possible, obviously. Um, but that's not going to rot there. It might still rot here, so I'll keep an eye on it, but you can always replace it. And then I've got um, two tomatillo plants here, and these are um, not self-fertile, so you have to have, well, you should have two plants if you want to have, um, if you want to be sure of pollination and getting fruit. So, um, yeah, so they're sort of a bush growing habit. habit. I've never grown them before, but I'm thinking I can tie them in with string, just supporting them as they grow up if they need it. And in here is um, my only large bush variety tomato, which is uh, latte, lata, lata. And uh, yeah, it's, you know, they're all starting to flower. Sorry, <laughs> they're all starting to flower. So we'll see with this weather now, they're not gonna be happy, um, but yeah, there we are. So as an end, I thought I'd leave you with a view of my plot and end with a bit of a garden fail here where uh, part of the structure supporting my Monch 2 has fallen down and I need to fix that. But yes, otherwise, so far so good and look how neat it all is now that I've cut the grass. And um, you know, that beautiful flower mound that's not complete but still looking very good. See you next time and stay dry.